Hey, this is Nick Aulis with ProgramPractical.com coming today with a video on bubble sort algorithms in Ruby. So, for anyone who doesn't know, a bubble sort algorithm is essentially a very simple sorting algorithm where you compare two values side by side and if you know, one's larger than the other, uh, you switch them, move on to the next one, and reevaluate. Now, this is a very good uh, starting algorithm for people kind of learning their way through a language it's not a very efficient algorithm as you'll see um, so this is the official Wikipedia page on the algorithm and it actually has a running example here of what a uh, bubble sort does so you can see the black ones are ones that it's already figured out uh, so it knows it doesn't need to run through those again but as you can see it has to go through each one testing what's even what's not even if it's not then or not, not even but larger and if it's not larger switch them move on to the next one and then lock it down now this has actually been going on for a very long time because it started with at that eight but you can see right here it's starting to figure it out so our goal is to make a bubble sort algorithm like this inside of the ruby language so It'd be best to see this in action, so we are going to jump over to our code file and uh, start out. We're actually going to start out by uh, writing a test for it, uh, so we know kind of what we're shooting for, and we'll be able to test to see um, when we actually have completed our goal. So the first thing we'll want to do is uh, bring in that bubble file, since that will be our code base for this. And then we'll also want to bring in, uh, we'll just be doing a uh, test unit for this. We're not going to do any kind of RSpec or anything ridiculous for something this simple. Yeah, this should be fine. We're going to, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to just do this test first. And we're actually going to do a second way, kind of uh, refactoring a little bit on uh, down the road. But this should be fine now. What we're going to do is save this file. And then we're going to give it a quick test just to kind of um, show we got it working. Ruby bubble test. And of course, there's our fail uh, because, of course, nothing happened. <laughs> we didn't return anything. That thing couldn't be found. Uh, so we got a nice little crash there. All right, well, I already got this file started. Um, so just to run through real quick what's in there, we have a bullet plate. Um, method called bubble sort and it takes in an argument called list which we're expecting to be a array uh, we also went ahead and initialized a variable called sorted and set it to false and then uh, all the math or all the goodness here is going to happen inside a, a till loop um, and it's going to keep going until sorted equals true now we went ahead and also defined sorted equal to true because we're going to let our method uh, trigger it to be false. So we're going to always assume that it is sorted and until we know otherwise uh, it is sorted. Alright so uh, so we're going to want to actually uh, do a couple of things. We will want to make sure we keep account of how many passes we have done uh, so we know what to keep off at the end. So we're going to make another variable called passes and we're going to set that to zero. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to make a range and it's going to be the uh, length of the list of course minus passes so we don't keep going through anything we've already done and we're just going to say each do and there's its integer and we're going to say end now every time we get through this bit of code right here we now have a sorted variable at the end so we're going to want to increment that passes by one all right and that will keep that going which will keep us knocking stuff off the end so we're not constantly looping through so loop the list minus the in passes already done as end end of array is sorted already. So now once we're actually inside the list, uh, we're going to want to 
break out of the loop um, if we're at the end of the array so that we, we stay in bound. So the big thing we want to do here is check uh, if the I, um, if our list I is bigger than um, the list I plus one. There it is. All right. What I'm going to say here is we're going to wrap this into an if now. So this was our testing condition. Um, we're going to say if that equal if if our left is bigger than the right, then we of course want to swap that. Um, what we do when we get into here is we're going to say sorted is not true because we just found a mistake in our sort. Uh, we're going to have to make a new temporary variable to kind of hold this in while we swap things around. I'm going to take the one that we're currently on, set that into the temp variable, and then move the um, i plus 1, or the one to our right, over into where the current one is. And then, of course, we want to put that one that we have in the temp back into that right val variable. You can see how that happens. So we're just we're we're saving one to the side real quick so we can overwrite it and then put everything back. And I'm gonna save that real quick and let's add our code in here or comment in here. And so that will switch it and that will keep us on our passes. So by the time we get all the way out of here, we just want to return our list as we've been making a bunch of edits to it. Uh, so let's see how that works and see if we get any kind of errors or anything weird happens. And we do have an error here. All right, what we're going to do to uh, try and troubleshoot this, what we'll do is we're going to do a puts i just to see if we can get figure out what's happening. Um, and it also wouldn't be wouldn't be bad at the very top to put a puts list so we can see the array being passed into. All right, so there's our list. There's our count. That would be right. So <laughs> arrays are zero start at zero and work their way up. Um, so this list length, uh, we look at our list here. Uh, there are six variables. So this is actually a six. The problem is, is it goes zero to five. Well, right here I have zero to five. That's what this is saying. It goes from Go from zero to five because you're going to ignore that six. But as we can see here, it's going to go zero, one, two, three, four, five. And when it does that last five, it's going to look one to the right, which doesn't exist fix. So what I'd probably say is just change this to skip. The reason why, and you could leave it at passes. Um, the problem is I don't like about passes being one is if you come back to this later on, you're going to be like, why is passes set to one? And you could you know, add a comment. But for me, I, I just in my head, skip sounds a little bit more syntactically correct than passes when you get into this. You could update that as well, but I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, so there we go. In all intents and purposes, we have a nice little uh, array that works, or a bubble sort that works. I'm gonna get rid of these puts real quick. This this works great. What I want to do is make a new method, but an array of strings, and it's going to sort uh, sort based on length. Whatever. But we're gonna actually pass it in a block of stuff to do. Uh, which, if you watched last week's video, is all about uh, what we can do in blocks. So, we're going to take that into practice this week. And so, what we're going to do now is we're going to make a new method called sort by. Uh, and it is going to take a block. And that block is going to hand us two variables, a left and right variable. We do the math on and return a true or false. So we'll want to um, change this around a bit. Um, 
We're going to move this logic. So we're going to make a new bubble sort. And we're going to hand it a list. We don't want to break what we've already done, right? But we don't want to retype everything. So we're going to refactor this code to be a little bit more ambiguous. We're going to do our bubble sort by list and we'll just define our own little block. Left, right. And we're going to say if left is greater than right. And, and we're going to return our list, of course. And there we go. So our original bubble sort now works. Uh, well, I mean, not quite yet, because we need to do the yield down here. Uh, I want if the yield of list i and list i, oops, i plus 1. Save that. Okay, so we didn't get anything back. Now the question is, what is actually happening um, in the loop? So, because the, the first one um, is working, you know, the first test is passing, this first bubble sort, um, where it's just the numbers is passing, but this one where we're doing the minus isn't. Uh, the big, the easiest way to test this would be just to tell it to do puts real fast and run it again. Uh, so you see we have a negative 3, a 2, and a fail. Um, but this is testing true and false, really. Um, now, I could say, well, I need to change my original algorithm, um, or my, the algorithm inside the block in this test to do something more true-false, not minuses. Uh, and that's, you know, fair. Um, I wouldn't say that's wrong by any means. But at the same time... I would like to add a test that just, you know, takes into account, you know, are you less than one? Is it a negative number? Is it a, is it a larger number? Um, and kind of add that ability to reconcile numbers, right? Um, so we're just going to build that into our test to make things a little bit easier. So what we'll want to do here is we'll want to cut this off. Test against block and we'll do a block results equals so we'll just do a um, a quick if the block results is a integer so like I said this isn't a big deal and frankly um, you know, it's up to you if this is something you want in your math. Uh, for me, it is something that if they are returning a number, I just want to go ahead and convert that number into a true and false based on if it's one or bigger or, um, so yeah, so this one's essentially just saying, you know, uh, if block results is less than one, so if it's zero or anything lower than that, it's going to be false. Otherwise, if it is one or anything larger, it's going to be true. And we're going to return that. And then here we just test uh, against the block results. Now for another test. And this should work for us. And there we go. Um, here, we'll clear this up so it's a bit easier to read. But there it goes. Two assertions. Uh, and they b both pass with 100% pass rate. So now we do have a sort algorithm that you can just do a bubble sort and then just pass it a list of numbers and it can handle it. Or going off our lessons from yesterday or from last Monday, we can use the function bubble sort by, hand it our list, and then also define a block and have our own math going on. We can either set this math to return a Boolean or if it's a number value, as long as it's above zero, it will return true. And if it's below zero or zero or below, it will return false. Um, and we did that all with 35 lines of code, which isn't too bad, uh, especially considering all the comments we put in. And I'm sure this could be refactored a bit more. Um, but anyways, uh, thank you so much again. My name is Nick Aulis, and I'm with Program Practical. Uh, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you don't. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments.